In this video, we're going to hook up the Behor V4 to the Duet 6HC. The first step is to connect the stepper motor. So we have four wires here. And we're going to use some connectors and pins. Here's the connector. Here's the pins. We're going to use this IWIS tool. And the first thing to note is that the green and black pairs on the stepper, they go together, so that's uh, the green and black uh, wires go together as one pair, red and blue go together as another pair, and I'm going to wire this directly here just for demo purposes, but normally you go through a wire like this with a connector at the end, and uh, that's for a 3D printer or an extruder, um, because this isn't long enough. So we're going to do this without fans. If you want to add fans and do fan control, you can go down here to these four pin connectors here. Out four, out five, out six. The thermistors go in here. We're going to just do one thermistor. And then for the heat control, we'll do that here. Out one. We're running everything at 24 volts. And... Uh, for a bigger machine using like AC power, we go through a relay, but we don't need this. We don't need that for this uh, Mayhor. This can supply up to four, uh, six amps at 24 volts. I accidentally showed you the wrong pins earlier. We want to use these uh, these pins here for these big connectors. So these um, these almost look like a box here like a, like a square compared to these pins these look different here these are for the smaller connectors like this with the two kind of rails so you get your iwis tool and put the crimp in and then take the wire you put it in so that the plastic is at the end and then the metal goes through and then you crimp it down when you're done it should look like this black green red blue and when you put each of these in here it'll make a clicking sound and then this all clips right in here Next, we're going to wire in the heater cartridge. This is a 24 volt, 50 watt heater cartridge. All the cartridges are the same dimension, 6 millimeter diameter by 20 millimeter long. And we're going to use the same style of crimp connector here. This is a, a square type. Next, we use these crimps, these ones Here's the part number, and these go into this two-pin connector, and then that's going to connect right up to temp zero here, right here. I ended up going to temp one actually here, and we're getting temperature feedback on our screen, also on the computer. So that's good. Now it's time to put these inside. We have everything wired up. So we're going to use a two and a half millimeter hex key here to take these off. All right, the heater's in the block here, the thermistor's in the block. There's a 1.5 millimeter screw here that needs to be turned, and then a two millimeter screw here and it's a tight fit but uh, here we go some of the duet uh, parameters are available here at the uh, Mayhor site I'll put the link in the description 
And so you can copy these. This is the max temp and so on and so forth. This is important. You don't want it to burn up. So make sure your current is appropriate for the motor. And if you want to do cold extrusion, if you don't have any material in there, uh, then you can do that just for testing purposes. I have some material in there already, so uh, I'm not going to do that. You'll just hear a stalled motor, essentially, if you, if you have material that's hardened and you try to cold extrude. I did copy over the PID parameters here, though, to the config file. So I'm going to save it. All right, let's try heating it up here. We'll go to 250, see what happens. All right, it took about two and a half minutes to get to 250, and material starting to ooze out. So I'm going to try to extrude, extrude. All right. Now it's spun, but it's spun the wrong way. So there's a couple ways to solve this. One way is to just switch any two wires here. So well, any two coupled wires. So black and gr black and green can switch, or red and blue. So that's an electrical way to switch. Or in the config file, we go to. drive mapping. We're going to go to our last drive here and switch from an S1 to S0. Alright, now extrude and it's going in the right direction. Alright, I'm adding more temperatures here so we can go higher. We're going to go up to 300 C. That's done here, down here, machine specific, and then add our temperature. So 300, and add. I'm also going to set the, in the um, config file, I'm going to set the max temperature to like 310. Go to system, config. We're going to go to 310 here. And save. Alright, let's go to 300. See if we can do it. This is with the 50 watt cartridge and the low temp thermistor in here. Alright, shooting for 300. Shooting for 300, here we go, 300, we hit 300. Very nice, very nice. With a 50 watt. It only took a couple minutes. Here are our stepper configurations. Steps per millimeter. Maximums. We're doing 16 as our micro steps. Let's see what we can get out of this thing. Some people have been asking me what's the most uh, material this can output. So I made a little macro here. Here's the volume and here's the speed. These are the maximums um, really I've been able to achieve. Above this it really does tend to stall. So let's test it out. All right, the material out is 0.065 ounces. One point eight grams. And we did that in thirty eight seconds, twelve and a half rotations. So let's convert these. 
So here are the results. Maximum results with this LX175 PLA, a 220C with a 2 millimeter nozzle. The Mejor here is able to extrude up to 170 grams per hour, almost 20 RPM. This was able to generate about 9.5 pounds peak of force before stalling out. With this fairly crude setup and imperfect sealing between the drill bit and the uh, two millimeter nozzle here, I'm estimating the pressure generated peak is about almost 2,000 psi. It might be uh, even higher than this just because there's not a perfect seal, yada yada yada, but it's a pretty good approximation. It's higher than I expected. Well, thanks. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned next week where we compare different pellet extruders.